Mm -hmm. um, but 24th uh, in the league in red zone. Yeah. Obviously, if you line that thing up, <coughs> things would be yeah. really well. Um, any, any, can you put your finger on anything that's in particular that's going on in that area? You know, we're, we're getting down there in the red area, which is a good thing. You know, we just got to do a better job of finishing drives. And I think the balance that we have in offense needs to continue down there. Um, you know, we got to have to do a better job of executing and then do a better job of putting those players in position to execute. So when we get down there, um, you know, we, we can't fall behind down distance, can't have any penalties. And then we obviously have to execute the small little details of that area of the field. So whether it's run or pass, we got to try and make sure everybody does their job and we execute the best play possible. And then again, it comes down to four point plays. I think Coach talked about that, you know, here moving forward the other day is when you get down there, it's third and goal at the four. You don't get it, you kick a field goal, difference of four points. So we got to make sure we focus on the four point plays moving forward and make sure we're ready to go for those. And, you know, and if we can improve on those, I think we'll see an improvement in the red zone. Well, pretty much one of the, you know, uh, dominant team sports. And one guy doesn't do his job necessarily or yeah. runs or whatever the case might be. Yeah. It could blow the whole thing up. When you're looking at the film, are you seeing any of that? Where when, you, when it comes to execution, mm -hmm. maybe there's a guy here or a guy there not pointing any fingers, but where there's a lack of um, efficiency. I think that's any, any play, really. You know, when you go back and grade the film, you look at each play as it happens, and you, you wish a certain guy used a different technique or wish a guy maybe executed a play a little better, whether it's mental or physical. And that could be for any play in football, to your point, you know. And you really search it for that perfect play. And when you have those perfect plays, which we do, which we had some good ones and everybody did their job and did it consistently, you saw some special things happen. So, you know, we're going to keep trying to make sure that happens on a play-to-play -play basis and happen more consistently. It's not going to happen for 65 plays straight. I mean, that's, I'm, I've yet to see that happen in football, but we're going to try to make sure that it happens more consistently. I mean, Tyron is a guy with, whose speed can really be a game changer. What does he have to do to get reps? Yeah, you um, you know, T. Johnson has done a good job um, in camp. He obviously made the team be on the practice squad last year. Um, he's really accepted the role as being, you know, um, a backup receiver on game day. And just the way the cards have been dealt in terms of the game, how's it gone? He hasn't been getting on the field a little bit. You obviously he obviously produced a lot in the preseason. And I think the biggest thing for him is just making sure that he comes in and making sure he knows, you know, what to do, how to do it, and then consistently show that in the practice field, which he's done a good job of. And you know, his 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 opportunity will come. You know, I coached a young guy by the name of Jacob Myers, you know, in New England, and. You know, he didn't play. In the, he was inactive for two games and then didn't play until there was an injury. And his role as a reserve receiver was to come in there and produce. And he obviously did that in New England back in 2020, and he never let go. So I think for young guys like that who have that opportunity, it's just when does the opportunity come? Um, it, we don't know. And, but if he obviously has some opportunities this week, you know, from his practice performance, then he'll get them. In, New, in Green Bay, Devontae was double teamed, and I got this stat somewhere. I apologize. I don't remember who, but I was at my research. Uh, over 90% of the time, double team. Same thing that you're seeing here with now that he's a Raider. When that's happening, do you just have to become, is, is it a new creativity? What do you have to do to get him involved more? Yeah, I think um, as a coaching staff and as, as a whole entire unit, I think we have to make sure we put our players in the best chance to be successful, and that's everybody. So there's different ways we can try to use Devontae, or there's different ways we can use Matt Collins, or different ways to attack the running game. We're going to try and do that week to week. So, you know, the process has begun now for Denver, so we're trying to look and see what Denver does. They're obviously a very talented group. You know, they have a lot of skilled players. They're coached very well. They play very hard. They think they're ranked very high in the league in terms of all statistics in terms of defense. They get the ball out on people. So as you go into each week, hey, where can we put certain guys to make production? And that's what we'll do with every player. With that being said, uh, with how defenses have been playing Devonta Adams, how crucial has it been for the offense for Matt Collins to step up and play the way that he has? Yeah, Matt Collins has done a very good job. You know, something that um, he's done a good job of when he first got here. He's taken ownership. Obviously, he wasn't here last year. He's, wasn't here in the system, and he's a new player in this building. He's a phenomenal human being, first of all. He works extremely hard, and he takes a lot of ownership in terms of making sure he does his job every play. So, you know, when those opportunities come, like we talked about with, with, you know, T. Johnson, you know, he takes advantage of them. So he's done a very good job of that. Max, obviously, a captain. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. Is, is, is he an example of somebody that, you know, hey, be dialed in every single play? Like, yes, no doubt. No doubt. He's, he takes it serious. He takes his job serious. You know, I, I enjoy working with him 100%. I mean, he's a true joy. He's a great, like I said, I can't say enough about the person. He's phenomenal. And the way he goes about his work, his work ethic, he's here early, he stays late, and he makes sure all his, you know, everything is taken care of before each day. And then his routine on game day, his routine before the game, it's, it's really remarkable. I, I commend him for the job he's done. Talk about Hunter Renfro. What kind of flexibility does he give you once he's on the field and healthy? 
Well, obviously Hunter, you know, was a starter, has been a starter for us. And, you know, we obviously missed him with the injury last week and we'll see what his status is this week uh, moving forward. But, you know, he obviously is a receiver in the, on, the, on the field that can obviously go in there and do some things in terms of the passing game and then help out in the running game. But, you know, Keelan Cole stepped up and played his job. That's another example of opportunity, you know. So whoever's out there to play, we're going to make sure that we coach them up and make sure they can cont contribute to win. To go back to Mac for a second, I mean, everybody knows the, the person, the character, the leader, the special teams dominance yeah. that he's had. Like, did you foresee this kind of role in the offense, though, for him? You know, I think that goes back to what Coach used to say about his role is what he makes it. So he came in here, right, in training camp, and he really did, he really focused on his craft. You know, I remember having a conversation with him, and what well, he always wants to improve. So whether it's coaching with Coach Bennett, coaching with my, myself, or Coach McDaniel's, what can he do better? And he's really focused on core things, whether it's the top of the route, coming back downhill, attacking the football, you know, making sure he reads coverages out correctly, you know, and ca just catching the football, getting open and catch the football, and then blocking, you know. You know, I used to say all the time in New England, uh, you know, no block, no rock. And that applies here. Coach Ben does a great job with those guys, making sure they come in there and block the force on every single play, handle, handle what they need to handle in the running game. And he's done all that stuff at an exceptional level, which is why he's playing on Sunday. Coach, when you're on three, you can spend a lot of time on negativity, but there's been a lot of good, too. I'm just curious, how do you find that balance of, guys, we got to fix this, yeah. but at the same time, Hey, this is going. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I think you just try and be consistent every single day as a coaching staff and as a player. And I think the guys have done have had a great mind, have had a great mindset, and we're going to continue to do that for them as coaches, as a coaching staff, and as a whole building. You know, be the same person every single day. Work extremely hard to try and get that get that win, and which you know we're going to try and single do every single day this week moving forward, and then the next week after that, and the next week after that. But be consistent as consistent can be. You look at this Broncos defense preview. I mean, what are the strengths of the team? I guess primarily also in the secondary of Patrick Sertain. You know, from top down, they're they're a very talented talented group. Patrick Sertain obviously is a very good player in their back end. He you know he can he can change direction. He can play on the ball. He presses elite guys on on the perimeter, um, and then on the two edge players, Chubb and Gregory are, are very skilled players. Very skilled players. So they have great speed. They have good quickness, and they can get up the field fast, and they can play against the run and set the edge. So when you're looking at the whole unit, okay, they can cover. They can. They can pass rush, and they can play against the run. So their coaching staff's done a great job with them in terms of putting their players in the right spot to be successful. And there's obviously been some, some carryover in terms of players that have been there before with the new regime and players they've added, like Gregory. So they've done a very good job, and you can see it on tape. When you look back at the on tape on the third downs in particular on yeah. offense, um, this, this past game, was, was it something that they did to you? Was it something that you guys just didn't execute? Where, where was kind of the, the balance of what went wrong there? You know, I think at the end of the day, you know, on third down, um, there's a, there's certain things that we try and do, and we have to stay in head and down distance first of all, right? So if we're in too many third and longs, it's gonna be a tough day on third down. So the first job starts on first and second down, and we can't put our put ourselves in position to try and convert a bunch of third and ten pluses. So if we try and stay in the third and two to five range, third and six to nine range, we really want to try and do that as much as possible because our percentages just by go down by being higher and higher. So if we're staying in the third and two to five range, which will be a goal for us moving forward, and then staying ahead and down distance and skipping some third downs. You know, if we want to try and eliminate some third downs in the game, try and have more positive plays in the first and second down, get the running game going, you know, making sure we're getting the ball on time at first and second down and not having the negative plays on first and second down really will be key to carrying over to success on third down. Is there, is there a difference between third and fourth down? I mean, I mean obviously, it's kind of a, a fluky thing, I guess, but... Convert all the fourth downs. Is there is there a difference in mentality and mindset and how you're approaching that? No, there's no. Um, I mean, in terms of in terms of schematics, there could be something different in terms of what teams do. But in terms of a mindset, we're going out there to try and convert every third down and try and convert every fourth down. And we did a good job of that in the in the game. Like you said, we were three for three on fourth down and weren't as good on third down. But you know, again, one one the fourth down was a fourth and one which we did which converted, and the fourth other fourth downs were fourth and got a habits which were obviously d difficult to con convert, but we did a good job of that. Mac made two great plays, and Derek made two great throws. So, again, we're just got to try and make sure a fourth and ten and got to have is not a great scenario to be in, right? We're going to try and stay away from that, just like I pointed out with third and ten. So, again, it's just really more about execution and making sure our players are in the position to be succeed. What was your uh, assessment of Alex Barris when he, he, you know, he got the call? And he started the games before in the NFL, but yeah. he gets called up and, and does this start. Yeah, I, Alex is, again, just like Mac, Alex is a great person. You know, he came in here um, in camp, and obviously he's been on the practice squad, and, and he has practiced very well. And like we talked about in previous weeks, the, um, they practice well, they're going to get a chance to play. And Alex did that, and obviously he, he played well in the game, and the whole, as did the whole unit, which is why you saw them, I would say, play the entirety of the game. 
And, you know, I was very proud of Alex, the way he competed and fought. And then he's going to have an opportunity again to compete in practice this week with a bunch of other guys to try and play again. So I'm looking forward to watching him practice and other guys practice as well. When you have rotations like you kind of had on the, have on the offensive line, you know, guys are going to get promoted, but there are also going to be guys that are not starting anymore. How have you kind of liked the response of guys that are kind of not in that role anymore? Yeah, th those guys compete hard every single day. So, you know, when they go out, they know, they know that whatever they do in practice in terms of competing and executing, they're going to have a chance to play in the game, and we're going to play the best players out there. That goes for any position. So you know, I think each guy's going to come in here on Wednesday morning, tomorrow morning, and say, you know what, if I put a good week of practice together and show what I can do and match the game plan, then you're going to see me play on Sunday. And so I think that's the not only mindset for the offensive line, but that goes to the receiver position, the running back position, tight end position, you name it. You guys all set? Okay, thank you. Awesome. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Um, at halftime, discussions just in terms of, okay, let's settle down, let's see what they're doing, um, and then let's do our best to take away what they're doing. You know, just play a little bit tighter with the run defense, a little tighter bit with the coverage, and, you know, just settling down was really the main thing, and, you know, just doing our fundamentals. I mean, most of the time when something like that happens, usually what we do is we go back and focus on the fundamentals, let's start tackling better, let's start playing with our hands better. And that, that was evident when you watched the tape. That's a lot of stuff that ended up um, happening better there. And then obviously I had to do a better job, you know, calling it too. But, I mean, usually it comes back to fundamentals. Well, both Max and Duran kind of talked about after the game of just embracing one play at a time and forgetting forgetting last play. Just it's, it's all about this play. Do you think that was something that kind of it was building on itself in the first half? I, I'm not sure. You, have, you I mean, again, you talked to them and they said that. I, I think that's just the – a good thing to think about just in this league in general. Just, you know, you have 17 opportunities every year right now, and each week is different, you know, and then you take that down to a smaller scale in terms of each play is different and just moving on from the next play. You know, I think that's an important philosophy just to think about this game in general. And, you know, but I can't speak for those guys, but I, I think it's a smart approach. Coach, when you look at Chandler, mm -hmm. who's paid a lot of money to be a big impact player, mm -hmm. and his impact hasn't been that at least in my observation, since mm -hmm. in the first three games. Is there changes that schematically need to happen? Is it some things he needs to do? Where do you think he needs to do to be the Chandler Jones that people thought he was going to be? Again, each year is different. And, when you know, again, when you watch the tape and see where people are having their production and just, again, everybody's looking for the statistics and stuff like that. The impact, one, you know, off the field, two, the attention they bring that allows other people to play more freely. Again, it's a long season, and I know this. Chandler works hard, and we'll see how – again, I know the only thing Chandler's worried about, just ha knowing him for a long time, is about wins. So regardless of what the production was or it, what it could have been, Chandler cares about winning, just like – the people here at this in this building, we care about winning, so that's the number one thing. And you know, once we start winning, that's 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 what we'll be happy there. You know, you know, you guys are always preparing and watching film and seeing what the tendencies mm -hmm. are of teams and getting ready for a game. And the one thing the Titans just don't throw the ball to Derrick Henry. Like it doesn't. They threw it to him once in the first mm -hmm. two games, and it wasn't complete. Like when a team goes against their, uh, I guess their identity like that, how difficult is that to, like, oh, this is not something we saw. This is not something we prepared, prepared for necessarily. What, how do you react to that? That, that? That's the most fun part of our job. I think, you know, just in terms of as a coach, the in-game adjustments, that's the most fun I've ever had coaching when you make an in-game adjustment. So, you know, because they throw something at you that's different, then you have to adjust to it, you know, whether it's checking the ball down to the back or, okay, they decide to go with perimeter runs as opposed to inside runs. You know, just like this week when we go against Denver, there's going to be something different. There's going to be a wrinkle. Because, again, that's what we do, you know, all the work for all week in terms of preparation is to try to find something where, okay, we could try to exploit this weakness or do something different, and then the adjustments have to happen in the game. But that's one of the most fun things that we do. And, I mean, I, I look forward to it. And, you know, obviously we got to do a good job of adjusting within the game, and that's an important part of our job. Going into this week against the Broncos, when you look at Russell Wilson, what's something that you think makes him different than the other three quarterbacks you've gone up against so far? I mean, one, you know, veteran. I mean, I know Tannehill's a veteran too, but just in terms of, you know, Russell has a lot of experience of running the offense, truly a check with me quarterback where he could call the play, get him in and out of plays um, at the line of scrimmage. 
and the experience he has with that, you know, no different than some of the other veteran quarterbacks. They've seen everything. You know, they've seen you play too high. They've seen you play single high and spin it too high. They've seen all that stuff. So that's always interesting when you're playing a veteran quarterback like that, especially someone that's played at such a high level. The other thing that stands out, the ability to throw the ball deep with uh, Russell. I mean, I, I knew him when he was a kid. So I, I, he was a ball boy for us at Richmond. His brother played for us at the University of Richmond. So, I mean, he, he had these big hands and he could throw the ball. He threw the ball better than our – okay, I don't want to say that. Stay <laughs> – Stacy, Stacy, tell him to get mad at me if I said that. Stacy, I didn't mean that, but like he could throw the ball pretty good um, when he was a young kid, and um, I think just the ability to throw the ball deep and the accuracy with it, you know, he gives a, it throws a very catchable ball. That's one thing that stands out just over the years, you know, over the years with him. Coach, when you start zero three, mm -hmm. there is a lot of pressure and there is negativity, but on the same side, there's been a lot that's been done well. So mm -hmm. as a coach. How do you balance, guys, we got to fix this and pointing out the mistakes, but still being honest and saying, hey, there's some things we've done right. I think I've, I've talked to you guys about this before. Consistency is a big thing, you know, just being consistent in terms of, okay, let's, let's we gotta build towards being more consistent within the game. Obviously, I have to be consistent with my approach in terms of, okay, here's the standard. This is what we want to have happen, and how can we build towards that? And because I'm a teacher and I just happen to teach football, just – Keep teaching and just, you know, building that relationship and getting the guys to understand, okay, we could have done this a little bit better. We could do this a little bit better. I could do this a lot better. You know, and that's that's one thing, the honesty for me, I think that's important. And, you know, thankfully all our coaches, we know do a better job and get these guys ready to go for the game and we'll do our best and see how it plays out on Sunday. Chandler may have been off to a slow start, as Sando was kind of talking about, but when you see numbers between him and Russell Wilson in the past, I think it's 16 and a half sacks that he's had on him mm -hmm. alone. How much uh, does that kind of excite you as a coordinator to have that matchup here in the AFC West with Chandler? Well, I, I hope Russell's blocking Chandler. That would, that would help. No, but I'm, uh, <laughs> but um, no, I remember his first sack against Russell. It was in 2012. Uh, it was, I remember that was Chandler's rookie year. That was his first sack. And then, but um, I, I know he's he's good friends with Russell, I believe. And you know, I know Russ from when he was younger. And it's always a challenge to go against him. I mean, he was a rookie. My I, that was my third year in the league or fourth year in the league. And he came back with. Uh, Four minutes left. They were down by 12, and they won the game in Seattle. So it's always exciting to play with, play against them. And you know, you include the Super Bowl that we played against them. It's always exciting. But you have to ask Chandler what he's thinking about it. But I know they're friends, and they're probably excited to go against each other. But they don't directly go against each other, which right. no, I, I know. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Apologize. <laughs> uh, Sam Webb's a young player, but he deserves to be here. You guys have said that. I'm just curious. You obviously can't control injuries or how mm -hmm. things progress, but is he a young man that you've got confidence in can step up if called upon and produce? The thing about Sam, the improvement since he's gotten here has been really, really good in terms of just learning how to study, learning how to study. You know, again, a lot of stuff is outside of the football field. Just first learn how to be in the classroom, how to be attentive, how to study and how to prepare. That's the stuff he's been working on. Uh, Jason Simmons has been doing a good job working with him there. The other thing is he's big, he's long, he's fast, so and he, and he has a willingness to be physical. So right there, those are a lot of the traits we're looking for from that defensive back position. And just, you know, again, as he gets his more and more opportunities, he's just got to take advantage of it. What have you seen from Javante Williams? He's obviously a north-south runner, tough, physical, hard to stop between the tackles and can bounce it outside. But... What specifically have you seen from him coming from college and then now transitioning into the NFL? I remember they had two backs, if, if I'm remembering correctly, at North Carolina. The kid that's – not kid. The young man that's at the Jets right now, right? I thought his vision. And even now you just see it on tape, his vision in terms of seeing the backside cut back. I think that's pretty good by him. The physicality he runs with, you know, he runs behind his pads. Um, and then the ability to just, you know, make people miss in space as well. He's he's a pretty good back. I mean, they got they got a few good backs there at Denver right now. So I mean, they, they're in a good situation. About about how old was Russell when he was uh, when he was a ball boy? You guys, do you have any like favorite stories from him? No, I mean, well, you know, uh, he was his brother played for us, and so he was just there on the sideline. I mean, he probably I think he remembers me. I'm pretty sure he remembers me. <laughs> you know, but. Um, any good stories? I just remember he could throw the ball pretty good, and I was like, "This guy's in like eighth grade or whatever." <laughs> so, but I mean, good, good, good. He was always a good player, good player, football and baseball. So, 
the numbers, the pure numbers would suggest that Divine has struggled a little bit in pass coverage uh, mm -hmm. the, the first couple weeks. Is that something you've seen? Do you, you know, where is where is he in his development in that area, and, and how have you assessed it? Oh, Diablo. I mean, Diablo's a young player, and he's improving. And I, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, and, and I probably wouldn't. I mean, I, I don't know what that is, but I mean, I know this. The guy has the ability to cover man, zone. That's why he's out there. I mean, so, but just like anybody beginning of the season trying to improve, but I, w I mean, I wouldn't lean on those numbers too much. I, I, I just I just really, I, I, I know that Diablo is one, a type of backer that I want in our system in terms of the ability to cover, the play to run. I'm most impressed with how he's playing the run right now in terms of the physicality and how he's doing that, and I'm pleased with that. All right, you're all set. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you.